really holiness is dependent on being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is something that might trigger something in my soul, you may not be affected by it all. Something that might dig something up from my childhood I dig, that I don't need to deal with right now. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows that. So my path may be narrower than yours in certain areas, but in other areas in your life, it may be the other way around. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lift It Up podcast. My name is Corey O'Neill, and I'm here with our lead pastor, Joe Soros. And this is a place where we add value to your life with the Word of God. Uh, we're, we're a Bible church. We love the scriptures. We love studying the scriptures. Uh, we're people who just love the Word of God. Amen. And we believe that the scriptures are the best place to add value to someone's life. That's Amen. life to us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so today, we are talking about the topic of holiness. And so when you yeah, talk let, let's about- Let's add some content to that. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, bring some context to that because when you talk about holiness, or even when you mention the word holiness, uh, immediately a certain picture, you kind of get a mental picture. That it's probably a negative picture. You mm. probably think of somebody who's very judgmental. Snobby. Snobby. Uh, you get a very religious kind of picture, very, you know, somebody who's very into rituals, that kind of thing. Dresses a certain way. Yeah, definitely dresses Real a certain way. Real big on rules and regulations yeah. and do's and don'ts. I yes. never do this. I never do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so opposite of what the scriptures teach us about holiness. Yeah. So um, it's really about keeping yourself separate. Mm -hmm. And, and again, that even conjures up ideas of, yeah. well, you think you're better than someone. No, it has nothing to do with me thinking I'm better than anybody else. It actually has to do with me coming to the realization of who I really am like yeah. without God. And so the idea of separation is God has always wanted a people of his own. Okay, he calls the Jewish people his chosen people. He chose them to come out from the world. You remember back in Genesis chapter 12, God said to Abraham to leave his country, leave his family, leave everything that he was familiar with. It wasn't because he thought Abraham was better than the other people. It was because he wanted a people of his own, a people of his choosing, a people that would live like him, glorify him, magnify him, yeah. give witness of, of his involvement in their lives. <clears throat> and in order to do that, we have to separate ourselves from the world that we live in, from the society that we live in. Yeah. And so, and it's not, we were talking about this before, this isn't just to, you know, make your pastor happy or make other people happy. Living in holiness is, is not to make other people accept you. Um, it's for you. It's for me. It's, it's for us. It's for our benefit. Absolutely. It's for our benefit. And so if you are somebody who cringes when you hear the word holy, holiness. Uh, if you don't think holy is cool, uh, but by the end of this conversation, not only are you going to think holiness is cool, Amen. but you're going to think Amen. unholiness uh, is pretty lame. Okay. So um, let's talk about what we kind of went over just before we started recording. Sure. Um, Want to go back to Adam and Eve? Yeah. Might as well go back to the beginning, right? Yeah. Book of Beginnings. Adam was given an opportunity to separate himself, to obey God. And you, in order to obey God, you're going to have to separate yourself from certain things. Mm -hmm. God is always giving us opportunities to separate ourselves from things that are not good for us, separate ourselves from things that displease him. But he never makes us do it. He gives us the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Because God didn't make us to be robots. He made us creatures. We're a byproduct of him being love. So he gives us free choice. But he goes and explains to us why he wants us to separate from those things. Yeah. So he gave a challenge to Adam, created this perfect environment for him, and sees that it's not good for him to be alone. So he creates Eve out of Adam. But he gives Adam instruction. You can eat of anything that's in the garden. Here's where the, the water is. Here's where all the best things are for you. Just stay away from that tree. Don't, don't eat of the fruit. Don't partake of the fruit of that source of whatever it was. A source of information, obviously. <clears throat> so he gives Adam the opportunity. It's Adam's responsibility now yeah. to respond, to separate himself. But if you think about it, as we mentioned before, it's kind of like a revelation that hit us. 
Holiness is a method of preparation. Now, God knew that Satan was coming. God knew that the serpent was going to present this set of ideas yeah. and kind of like tempt them in their intellect. He knew that. So he's given Adam the opportunity to prepare himself by separating himself yeah. from a source of knowledge. Yeah, and he told them what the consequences were going to be. Exactly told them what the consequences were going to be. And the day that you eat of this tree, you yeah. shall surely die. Now, we have to explain that because we know Adam didn't die that day. In fact, he lived for hundreds and hundreds of years afterward, but he died spiritually. Yeah. And really what it comes down to is... Because people say all the time, well, your sin will separate you from God. Well, I see that God still got involved in Adam's life after the fall. So it's not so much that our sin separates us from God. I think it's more that our sin causes us to be less aware of God's presence in our lives or less aware mm -hmm. of the reality of who God is. And that's exactly what happened to them. Yeah. So their holiness um, is a method of preparation. Yeah, I think I think by most people's definition of holiness, they would say, "Well, God didn't want them to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because He just didn't want them to have fun." Well, that was the devil's that was the devil's yeah. angle, and He knows once you eat of that, you're going to be just like Him, which is the stupidest thing in the world, because they should have known they were ready just like him because it just says right there in Genesis 126 that God created man in his image and in his likeness. Mm -hmm. They already were like God. Yeah. But because they didn't retain the knowledge of God, as it says in Romans, they opened themselves up because he did not keep himself separate from the temptations that were coming through the serpent. They fell. Yeah. God was trying to prepare them. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a preparation <laughs> Yeah, there, holiness has holiness is not just like we said to make other people to make my pastor or whatever. No, some holiness authority is for us. It's for us. We walk different when yeah. we walk in holiness. When we separate ourselves from sin, okay. When we separate ourselves from sin, when we keep ourselves apart from sin, we walk differently. I don't care who you are. I don't care who's watching this. You know the truth. When you've sinned. And you know you've sinned. You do not walk the same before God. You don't. You don't. Yeah. Even in the natural, you don't walk the same. You carry yourself different. You're carrying the weight of that sin. You're carrying guilt and condemnation, which doesn't come from God. It's coming from the enemy. Mm -hmm. But when you resist sin, I talked about this very recently. When to me, when I resist sin, it's like I take on the robe of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I. It's like something comes on me. Yeah. Not, you're, not, you're not becoming righteous. No, no, no. I'm yeah. not becoming righteous. Yeah. I'm walking in righteousness. Yes. But <clears throat> righteousness, and I think we wanted to go into this, but we might as well go into it now. Righteousness is not something that you and I have control over. Yeah. God chose to put us in a position of right standing with himself, which is mm -hmm. righteousness. Yeah. When, we, when that word righteousness is in the Bible, I automatically, my head translated as right standing with God. Yeah, and okay. what is that? What is what, for anybody who might be uh, watching or listening? Like, what does that mean? Being in right standing with God. Well, well, before we come to Christ, before we receive Jesus, and we receive the forgiveness of our sins, we're carrying the weight of that. Okay, we're carrying the weight of, even though we might not realize yeah. it because we don't know any better. But when I come to Christ and I receive and I acknowledge and I believe in the yeah. fact that He died on the cross from yeah. in my place, that weight that we were carrying already crushed Him. Exactly. Yeah. It crushed him. So now a different weight, if you want to put that, comes on us. This mantle, this kind of robe, this, uh, I don't know what word I could use to describe something that encloses us within, yeah. like encapsulates us. Yeah. When we choose to walk in holiness, and what does that mean? When I choose to say no to sin, mm -hmm. when I choose to say to a temptation, no, I resist you in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to conduct myself that way. I'm not going to continue thinking that way. I'm not going to speak that way. I'm not going to walk that way. There's something that comes on us, and that causes us to separate from the rest of the things that yeah. are going on in this life. That's what Adam and Eve lost. Mm -hmm. They all of a sudden, within a split second, realize, wait a second. I don't feel that surrounding anymore. Yeah. I don't feel that covering anymore. Yeah. And it's interesting because that's the words that, that they use in the scripture to describe what their first reaction was. 
they sewed leaves together to make coverings, coverings because they recognized, oh my gosh, I'm naked, I'm vulnerable. Mm. I'm not covered. I'm not protected. There's something changed. Something happened. And it caused them to come to the place of fear and panic. Why? How do we know that? Because they ran and hid. Well, they hid. Why? Because they recognized, wait a second, that thing that I always had, because let's face it, they were created in righteousness. Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting thing to think about. They were created in righteousness. They were created in right. They were, they were created in the state that we call born again. They didn't have to get born again. They hmm. were created in right standing with God. Yeah. What does that mean? They had the ability to stand in the presence of God without any sense of guilt or condemnation, without any fear of retribution or reprisal. That's what we are positioned. That's God takes us because there's no way for us to earn that. When you got born again, when I got born again, he took you and put you in the position or we'd say the category of yeah. righteous one. You didn't do anything to her. No. The only thing you could do is say yes to Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So now you're in that position. So now as, as far as God's concerned, he sees you as in right standing with him. There's nothing separating you. Yeah. But when we walk in sin, like Adam and Eve were created that way, but when they sin, they realize something happened. Now, I believe with all my heart, it wasn't on God's part. It was on their part. Sure. God still saw them the way they were. How do we know that? Because he continued to deal with them. He didn't, he didn't abandon them forever. Yeah. He continued. He did everything possible. He created a sacrificial system so that they would be able to come into his presence, yeah. but an animal had to die. Blood had to be shed. Now we know that pointed eventually to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's why his sacrifice on the cross was once for all, one time for everyone. Yeah. And so that when we place our faith in that act of self-sacrifice that Jesus did, we now or place in that position of righteousness, but it's up to us to walk in holiness. Yeah. What, what, what are some of what are some of the challenges that one might pose to this idea that oh now I have to change my life when I become a Christian? You can't change your life. It's not something that we can do. Right. Um, I think we have a raised level of awareness that I really shouldn't say that because that doesn't please God. We know in here, once our spirit is alive unto God, we don't have to tell our spirit, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't say that. Our spirit tells us, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. I'm not comfortable hanging around with these people. I'm not comfortable going to that place. I'm not comfortable watching this. I'm not comfortable, you know, something on the inside tells us, Mm. This doesn't feel right, okay? Um, but it's our choice yeah. to decide whether we're going to turn from it or not. Now, we talked about this before, and I think it's an important thing for us to point out. God chooses us, okay? But we have to respond. He gives us the opportunity to respond to him. Now, you pointed out the fact that in the Old Testament, God said of his people that they were a chosen people, yeah. a royal priesthood, a holy nation a peculiar, a different people. Yeah, He declared that over them. He called yeah. them a holy nation. Yeah, and we're, the church, we're, we're Israel was like a, a type and shadow right. of right. God's people today, the church, Yeah, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you could, it could go both ways. The church could be a type right. and shadow yeah. of God's people. Yeah. Go both ways. So he declares us righteous. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't sin. Just because he called them a holy nation we know very clearly they continued to sin. They continued not to trust him. They continued to doubt him. They continued, They started to, to actively engage with worship with idols yeah. in direct contradiction to what God told them. So he doesn't make us, that's the point I'm trying to make is this, because some people walk around and say, well, it's up to God to make me holy. No, no, no. It's up to God to make you righteous. It's up to you to separate yourself. We have to be actively engaged. Yeah. All right, say, so, well, I can't do that. I can't, I, I just can't help myself. No, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. So we have the opportunity to walk on an everyday basis. And I think part of it is like, that's why his mercies are new every morning. Like every morning I can receive a fresh batch of, Father, you need to help me. Yeah. I want to walk in holiness today. I want to walk separate from the world. I don't want to displease you. I don't want to conduct myself in any way that's going to cause someone 
to blaspheme you or to yeah. speak evil of you because of my conduct. But that's something that you and I have to make the decision yeah. on an everyday basis. And that's a very simple thing to, to, to just have that kind of plead with God to, yes. to say what you were just saying. Right. That's a very simple thing. And he'll respond to that. Absolutely. Responds he he to that. responds with grace to that. Definitely. But I don't think a lot of people do that. It's maybe they, either they don't want to, or they just, they don't feel like anything would happen if they had really asked uh, God for help. I think it's help. a little deeper than that. I think most people don't feel comfortable being that honest with that's, God. That's good. Yeah. You know, we, we don't, we don't, understand that he already knows every thought that sure, we yeah. have. So we think, well, I have these thoughts on the inside, but I'll say this. Mm -hmm. And really that's hypocrisy. And that's yeah. the, that's pretty much religion summed up yeah. trying to put something on that's really not in you to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's our nature that has to change. So when our nature changes, when we go from having a sin nature to ha to being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, according to second Corinthians yeah. chapter five, our spirit man, who is a real person that we are, is not comfortable anymore conducting itself the way it did. Yeah. Our, our, and our spirit man, you know, that might have been, that may be the first time somebody watching or listening hear that term, the spirit man. Uh, our, our spirit man is the part of us that Absolutely. it's the real you. It's the real you. That's, that's the thing that was created by God. Yeah. It was dead before he came to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Now the real you is alive. Absolutely. And we'll live forever. Yeah. The, the real you is the you that doesn't want to sin. That, once, once our spirit's connected to God, sure. Yes, yeah. But, but before that, before Christ, the real you is dead, spiritually yeah. speaking. Yeah. So now in this newness of life, which, which Romans 6 talks about, you, you might as well, you want to go into that now in Romans we chapter could. 6? We could. Um, I did want to talk about Cain, though, yeah, first. Yeah, sure, yeah. Because that's the next generation after Adam and Eve. And I don't know if it's because Adam set the wrong example or whatever, or sin nature came into humanity. It seems like the drop-off from Adam and Eve to Cain is drastic. Yeah. I mean, they ate of a tree that they weren't supposed to. He kills his brother. That's a big discrepancy. Yeah. That's not like, well, you know, he picked up some of the traits of his father. No, he went right from Adam making a stupid mistake to totally giving himself over to a, yeah. a murderous spirit that comes mm -hmm. from the enemy. That's a drastic change from one generation to the other. Yeah. But even so, God is still wanting Cain to conduct himself in such a way to prepare him for the temptation that was coming. And we talked about here in Genesis chapter 4, and in the process of time, verse 3, in the process of time it came to pass, it came brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. He's the firstborn, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now here comes the next one. Now, verse 4, Abel, his little brother, also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Now, if you go back and, and go into ahead of time in Leviticus, that was a very precious sacrifice yeah. to bring. That is the proper sacrifice you bring. Yeah. Okay. When Adam and Eve sinned, uh, God didn't take a pumpkin and rub it on them. He didn't take a current, uh, you know, uh, uh, he didn't take a corn, a corn cob and rub it on. Them. He didn't take tomatoes and rub it on them. Yeah. He took the skins of freshly killed animals and covered them. Why? Because redemption is in the blood. Mm -hmm. Life. The life of the of the of the animal, the life of a, a person, is in its blood. Yeah. There's no blood in vegetables. Cain was purposely not submitting to God by bringing the offering of the ground, the stuff that he raised. Abel was the one who was bringing. He was submitting to God. Yeah. He was separating himself from his brother and bringing this proper sacrifice, and that enraged Cain because he now Cain's embarrassed because Abel did the right thing. Okay, so <clears throat> verse six says, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why has your countenance fallen? His whole, her whole personality changed. Okay, look at verse seven. Now, God knows that Cain is going to kill his brother. God knows the end from the beginning. There's yeah. nothing's hidden from his sight. But look at the mercy of God. He's trying to get Cain to make the right choice. In other words, you've already messed up by not bringing me the right offering. 
If you don't turn this thing around now, you're going to do something even worse. So again, coming back to the point you made before, holiness is for us. Yeah. For us to separate ourselves from the conduct that does not glorify God, is not good for us, that is preparation for us yeah. because Cain at this point might not even realize how far his anger was going to take him, but God did. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? And Cain's life didn't get any better after oh, this story. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. He had to spend the rest of his life looking over his shoulder. Exactly. Exactly. Verse 7, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And it's desire for you, and it's desire is for you. If, I remember reading this one time in the original language, like a transliteration from Hebrew, mm -hmm. and it said sin is crouched at the door. I, yeah. I picture like a, a panther, yeah. or picture like a tiger, ready to pounce on you. Yeah. He's saying this, you're right at the edge, Cain. You can choose to separate yourself from these emotions. You can choose to separate yourself from your offense and your anger against your brother. But if you don't, sin is waiting to pounce on you and cause you to do something even worse. Look yeah. at the mercy of God. Yeah. The mercy of God towards us when he, when he warns us at a time, yeah. when our spirit on the inside is like, eh, 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 yeah. don't do this. You see what I'm saying? I, I, and I think just specifically the topic of anger and resentment, because sometimes, honestly, that's like the number one offender in our lives sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's where offense starts, yeah. Sure, yeah. And again, coming back to this question, what is the picture that comes up in your mind when you hear the word holiness? And you think, okay, uh, I go to church, um, I pray, I, tr I try really hard not to curse. Um, I give. I give, yeah, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I help people. Yeah, right. All these, all these good things, and avoid like these external bad things, you know. Um, but how many people really think about bitterness and resentment and and rejecting that as a form, as, as a, a way of holiness? I That's think it's common. because it's on the inside, and, yeah. and now I could be sitting here smiling at you right now, but on the inside have hatred for you, yeah. and you won't say it, so we think we get away with it, but we don't realize that that eats away at us, and that's what happened to him. Yeah. If he would have took control and took responsibility for himself when he brought the wrong offering and said, God, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, Father, I'm sorry. Um, I've done wrong. I knew I should have brought you something alive, something that has blood but I chose in my stubbornness to do it this way. But now I realize my mistake. Father, forgive me. He didn't take responsibility yeah. himself. He projected his failure and it came out as anger towards his brother because his mm -hmm. brother who did well, who did good, pretty much made Cain look how bad he was. Do you think one of the reasons why people don't do that, why people don't take that posture of repentance is because they don't really see God as a forgiving God? They no, I think it's, uh, I could see your point there, but I think what is much uh, wrong emphasis on the topic of grace that's been preached, I think it's the other way around. So I don't really have to go before God and ask him for I forgiveness. Don't forgiveness. I don't need forgiveness. I don't need forgiveness. That's dangerous. I don't have to repent. I don't have to change. Yeah. After all, all my sins are ready to be forgiven. Uh, uh, no, no, it's not for God. It's for us. We need to ask for, for we need to ask for forgiveness we need to repent. We need to humble ourselves. We need to be open and transparent before God because otherwise my heart will not change. Mm -hmm. When I refuse to acknowledge it, that's a David's cry all throughout the book of Psalms. It, when you, I, if I refuse, if I hide my sin from you, my heart grows bitter, my heart goes hard. Yeah. But repentance and stuff is not for God. Acknowledging our sin is not for God. It's for us. And it is a form of holiness because yeah. the majority of the world works in pride, walks in haughtiness. I do nothing wrong. I'm a great person. I'm much better than you because after all, look at, I wrote a check out for 10 grand and sent it to the Red Cross. Yeah. Uh, I brought uh, two old ladies groceries from, it. you know, it's all me, 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 me. Yeah. Holiness is like, I'm separating myself. I'm not going to conduct myself the way the world does in pride in arrogance, yeah. in bringing attention to my own works. Yeah, look at Jesus at the temple. When, when there's, there's a Pharisee there and he's saying, what a wonderful person he is. I yeah. do this, I tithe and I do all these things and thank you for not making me mm -hmm. like this man. 
And that poor man yeah. who's humbling himself before God, I could just see him crouching on the steps of the temple, not even wanting to go into the temple itself, pounding on his heart, Father, forgive me. God, yeah. forgive me. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Yeah, and Jesus, Jesus said eyes, what? He was exalted. He those said, who will humble themselves right. will be exalted. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So basically it comes down to this. Holiness is us intentionally separating ourselves from the way the world conducts itself and consecrating. That's a really important word mm -hmm. you brought up before, and I'm glad you did. Consecrating is setting something apart for a special use. Yeah. And you and I cannot walk in the special use. You and I cannot walk in that um, those things that were planned for us before we were created according to Ephesians 2.10, but we are his workmanship, yeah. recreated in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus unto good works, yeah. which we which God planned before we even were conceived. I'm paraphrasing it, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can't walk in that. If we're, How yeah. are we going to walk in the purpose of God if we're going to constantly... Conduct ourselves selves the way the world does, which does not glorify yeah. God. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I've talked about this before, how everyone really wants to hear a sermon series on God's purpose, for God's calling on your life, your purpose, you know, what's God's plan for my life, you know, what, what's what's his Jeremiah 29, 11 thing for me. Everybody really loves that, that, you know, that really resonates with people all the time. It's very attractive. Uh, holiness, not so much until you realize that holiness, you can't have the Jeremiah 29, 11 thing. You can't have the, the purpose. You can't have the, the great things that God is calling you to do. If you don't separate yourself unto them. Exactly. If you don't separate yourself unto him, every person that ever did anything word of God had the opportunity to either you're going to continue walking in the world or you're going to separate yourself unto God. Mm -hmm. Moses had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. He was a big shot in Egypt. Yeah. But it took 40 years for him to get that stuff out of him to say, I don't want that worldliness anymore. Uh, yeah, I could have been maybe the next pharaoh. I could have been a big shot in mm -hmm. Egypt. I could have continued, enjoyed the wealth, the prestige, the status. Yeah. Could have had anything you wanted. Yeah. In fact, I believe in Hebrews, it says that he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. Exactly. Which insinuates that I guess, yeah, he, he could have been in line to be the pharaoh. Yeah, of course he could have been. Of course he could have been. But he chose to consecrate himself, mm -hmm. to connect himself to his brethren. Yeah. But there was a price to pay. There's always a price to pay. Abraham had to leave everything that was familiar to him. He had to separate himself from his world, from his way of doing things, from a, a region and a people who worship the moon god. All this, he had to separate himself out from under that before he could experience stepping into the purpose that yeah. God had for him. Yeah. And Moses and Abraham, they didn't have what we have. At the time where, where they decided that they were going to separate themselves, mm. they didn't have the deliverance, the salvation. Mm. They looked forward to it. They looked forward to it. But God, they, they couldn't walk in the reality of it yet. Yeah. But isn't it amazing that they still lived holier than some of us do? Sure, yeah. <laughs> and we have the Holy Spirit, yeah. and we have the complete Word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we trash on, on Abraham and, and Moses because of some of the mistakes that they made. You know, Abraham uh, fled to Egypt and just straight up sold his wife uh, to Pharaoh. And dabbled in the world. Y yeah. You know what? Hey, he, he wasn't born again. His spirit wasn't alive. He didn't have the power of God at the mm -hmm. time, I don't think. And he didn't have, his heart wasn't affected by the life-changing message of no, the gospel they of had, Jesus. They had to look for God Yeah, apart from themselves. We have his spirit living mm -hmm. in us. We have no excuse. Yeah, and not they didn't to have live. the scriptures either. Didn't have the scriptures. They didn't know what they could rely the, on. What they could Abraham's rely. scripture was literally just those first few verses in Genesis 3 where God says what he's going to do for him. Where yeah. I'm going to take you to a land, you're going to be a blessing. All the earth, families right. that are earth. That, right. that was the that yeah. was his yeah. description. God's that, word for him starts in where we call Genesis 12. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you a great nation, like you said. That's the promises he could rely on. Yeah. Go outside, look at the stars. If you can count yeah. the stars, you can count your descendants. Those are the promises yeah. he could rely and, on. And I believe <laughs> that Paul in Galatians equates that to the gospel, where he says mm -hmm. that the scriptures yeah, preached. Abraham believed yeah. God and. 
it was accounted yeah. to him as righteousness. Yeah, so that was the gospel for Abraham. And, and so that right. that set him on a path mm -hmm. to holiness. And obviously he messed up a lot, but what we have is the full revelation of what the gospel right. really is. Right. So, so coming back to that central point again, uh, holiness is our choice to live separate from the world that's around yeah. us, not in an arrogant way, not in a condescending way, not in I'm a better than you way. No, 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 no. It's, it's that if I want to help you, I need to separate myself so that I'm carrying yeah. the awareness of the presence of God. Yeah, because if you think about it, I know my coming to Christ, I'm sure you could say you're coming to Christ, is ha, had something to do with somebody else before me, before you deciding that they were going to separate themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Many individuals uh, yeah, came before I, us. I can think of many. I could, the one that sticks out the most to me was the very first person that brought the gospel to me. Mm -hmm. uh, she could have chosen to just stay in her lane as a business person came into my place of business, conduct business, and leave. She chose to buck that, to put that aside, because she recognized the Holy Spirit speaking to her that she needed to share Christ with me. Yeah. So in a very real sense, she separated herself from the business world for that period of time yeah. so that she could be a carrier, a distributor, a dispenser yeah. of the love of God towards me. Yeah. And um, I'm glad she did. Yeah. I'm glad she did. We, we, we should all want that. We should all desire yeah. to pass the baton, so to speak, yeah. to also be a carrier to somebody else, just like somebody was to us. Exactly. Exactly. But it involves our choice. Yeah. You know? Um, so we're talking about separation. We're talking about... And, and I, want, I, I want those that are watching, those that are listening to understand, um, when we talk about separation, we're talking about that we should treat our salvation and we should treat our relationship with God the way we would treat a priceless antique, yeah. a work of art, a piece of jewelry. You don't, you don't leave, you know, if you got a 10 carat diamond ring, you don't leave it on the coffee table. You don't put it next to the sink when you're washing dishes. You treasure that thing. It has value. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it costs something very, very, very precious for you to have that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's that, separate, like in God's eyes, he sees us as priceless. He sees we're precious to him. We've been accepted in his beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in the Old Testament, he calls us the apple of his eye. Uh, he says, he who touches you touches me. Yeah, that's He's treating us as precious, as valuable. And that's how we should look at our salvation. Yeah, uh, That's how we should look at our relationship with the Father. It should not be treated like... I'll talk to you when I talk to you. Meantime, I'm just going to live like everybody else. I'm going to hang out with that one, hang out with this one. I'm going to go to places I have no business going to because there's nothing good or godly happening there. We should be looking at ourselves in such a, in such a uh, perspective of it costs the blood of Jesus yeah. for me to say that I'm a believer, that I'm a Christian, that I'm a child of God. I have no right throwing myself into a garbage pile. Mm -hmm. I have no right putting myself in a position to be tainted or influenced by the things of this world. I am a child of God. Amen. I am a peculiar people. I yeah. have been chosen by him. I am a royal priesthood. And it's not to build me up that I'm better than you. It's to cause me to have a greater sense of gratitude for what God has done in my life and yeah. what it cost Jesus. For that reason, I should separate myself. That's good. See what I'm saying? No. So all, all of this, one might say, so you're talking about the beginning of my Christian journey. That That's that's when I need to uh, separate myself, make myself holy. And then at some point in the middle of my Christian life, I will finally get to the place where there, there's nothing for me to separate myself from anymore. That That's what somebody might think. Oh my gosh. There's always going to be things to separate. <laughs> it's an ongoing process an for, ongoing your, for process. the whole entirety of, of your life here on earth. That's why Paul tells us in a couple of different places, put on Christ. Mm-hmm. Put off the old man. Well, you don't put off the old man once. You wake up with the old man every morning. <laughs> every morning I've got to put on Christ. Every morning I'm, I'm like, Father, thank you that your mercies are new yeah. every morning. Why? 
Because we have this clock, this cycle in our yeah. life. You know, we conduct ourselves, do what we're going to do, go to sleep at night, wake up the next morning. Oh, it's a fresh new day. Well, yeah. Well, the same world that you left last night when you went to bed is alive and active. Yeah. And so, and this is the same, whether you're just starting out in your journey with Jesus, or if you're years as a Christian in, a leader, in leadership in a church and everything in between. Yeah. I don't know. Do we have time to go into Romans 6 or should we pick up the next time? Oh. <clears throat> okay. So we're talking about holiness and we're talking about the challenges um, to in the life of a Christian. A person is already born again. A person is already saved. Okay. Now we're born again. We're saved. So we've tasted of the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. He places in that position. Okay. Uh, which involved a great exchange, and we talked about this. Yeah, maybe we should go there first. Let's go to Second sure. Corinthians chapter five, because we've we've thrown that term around righteousness, but maybe for our listeners and those that are watching, they might not understand what we're talking about here. I like to start in verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, that's our spirit. Okay, yeah. we know that. Verse 18. Here's, here it comes out. I can explain how did we become. Where did it come from? Whose idea was it to make us a new creation in Christ? Right. Verse 18. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It's, it's, your, it's your job, it's my job, it's your responsibility, my responsibility to understand that we're ministers yeah. in God's eyes. Not just people who work in a church. Not just people who work in a church, not just people who are chef in a restaurant, cut people's hair, uh, a construction worker. Every Christian is a minister of reconciliation. In other yeah. words, he's giving us the anointing, the equipment, the empowerment to bring this message to somebody else, yeah. okay? Now, it doesn't mean a person might, may never spend a minute in the pulpit, but they're still ministers, we're all mm -hmm. ministers. And then verse 19, he goes on to explain that. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. In other words, not placing sin on us any longer. Why? Because Jesus died for us and paid for our sins um, and has committed to us this word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21 is where we want to get. We're talking about righteousness. For he, God, that first he is God, mm -hmm. made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us that we might or we could or we should become what? The righteousness of God in him, in Christ. That's how we become righteous. Jesus took all of our sin upon himself. He gave all his righteousness to us. When we said to Jesus, I believe in you, I believe that you're the son of God, I believe that you died on the cross for our sins, yeah. I believe that you rose again, we receive his righteousness. Why? Because he's already taken our sin upon himself at the cross. And by his stripes, we are healed, yeah. right? Yeah, and you know what? Jesus was referred to as the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. He, there was no person who walked in holiness like he did. Absolutely. Yet, he, at, by the end of his life, at, when he died, he was treated like the most unholy Absolutely. piece of garbage. Exactly, nailed to a piece of wood. He to, had to become that yeah. so that we could become what he is. Mm -hmm. And, and I really think that to the effect that you let that fact just melt your heart and to, to the effect that you allow it to really just permeate mm -hmm. and just reflect on that and think about that, <clears throat> I think that's going to have a, a huge impact on whether or not you really are willing to be holy. I think it's an appreciation factor. Yeah. Going back to what we were talking about before. When I hold in awe what he's done for me, I'm not going to want to put myself in a position to taint that which he's done in my life. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to happen. Sure, yeah. But hopefully it's going to happen by accident and yeah. not by choice. Yeah. 
You know, we should never be willingly sinning, but we know it's going to happen. So the exchange has taken place. He took our sin. We took his righteousness. Now he put us in that position of right standing now. Now it's up to us from this point forward. Are we going to live holy? Are we going to live separate? Am I going to obey that command that's both in the Old Testament and New Testament, come out from among them? Yeah. Touch not the unclean thing. And I'll receive you as sons. I'll receive you as children. He tells us, come out from among them. You know, we're in this world. We're not of this world. Paul mm -hmm. made it very clear. We're citizens of heaven, but we're here behind enemy lines. But we're not of this world. I'm, uh, I, as a born-again believer, I am not a byproduct of this world. Mm -hmm. I am an extension of the kingdom of God. Yeah. But my soul and my physical body are still trapped behind enemy lines on a planet that is still under the curse, uh, on a planet and in the days of time where everything that Timothy, uh, that Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, perilous times, we're in those perilous times. The easiest thing in the world right now is to sin. You can sin in creative ways like man has never sinned before. It, it, we're always coming up with more creative ways to sin. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, the power of the Spirit of God is, is rising up and making it easier. He's making himself more available to us, maybe you could put it that way, yeah. so that we can tap into the presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. And like it says in Titus chapter 2, we can deny ungodliness and worldly yeah. lusts and live soberly, yeah. righteously, and godly when? In this present age. Okay? We can yeah. walk separate from sin. We can live separate from sin. We can live holy. We, we have that little sliver of time, that couple of seconds where we realize, oh, my God, if I continue in this, I'm going to sin. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost is saying, don't do it, don't do it. Just like you said to Cain, what are you doing? If, you're, if you do well, but if you don't, sin is mm -hmm. at the door. Sin is crouched. Sin is ready to pounce like a predator, just ready. Like I, Again, I can picture like a panther jumping. It's yeah. there, but it doesn't have to unless we allow yeah. it. Do you think that some of the things that the Holy Spirit is kind of wanting to draw you away from sometimes, not, I'm not talking about you, just in general, the Christian. Right, I understand. Um, I don't know, what do you think about this? It, the thing that he would prefer you to separate from may not be outright sin that the Bible ex explicitly uh, states, but it, and it's something that <clears throat> could affect your soul. And where I'm going with this is this, for an example, I've shared this before, how, um, uh, earlier in the part of this year, uh, my wife and I started watching a TV show that I had already seen. Um, but I wanted to live it vicariously through her because so, so, she hadn't right, seen it. Right. And a couple episodes in, and it, it's not like there are much more explicit shows in this, um, but it's no PG rating show. A couple episodes in, I'm thinking like, man, I can't watch this. The protagonist is totally just a monster. And you know how like when, it, when you're watching a TV drama, you kind of take on the character traits sure of the protagonist. Yes. And I can't take on the, the character traits of this guy because of what God has me doing now in this part of the year, I just, I, I can't, I can't allow that stuff to, I couldn't allow that stuff to affect my soul and expect to be effective at what I'm doing now here in the ministry. Yeah. And so watching that show, um, like, I, I think there's just like, for every person has their own, I guess, their conscience, I think, comes into it. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's a conviction of the Holy Spirit for our protection and warning us. And he said, look, this isn't good for you. Yeah. You know, Paul said, I can do anything I want, but it's not all good for me. Right. I can eat anything I want, but it's not good for me. Sure. So um, I think it's it's the Holy Spirit does prompt us, kind of like yeah, pokes at us like, hey, you know, this isn't good for you. Not only that, but your wife was watching it. That too, yeah. And maybe maybe it may not have affected you as much as it might have affected her. Mm -hmm. And so the warning might have been, hey, sh she doesn't need to see this. Yeah. And so 
Yeah, and she and she was really cringing from because it's a gory, it, it's it's a graphic, yeah, I, I bloody show, yeah. and she wasn't into it. And I realized, you know what? As far as the story goes and the characters, it's probably the greatest show ever made. But is it worth? Yeah. Is it is it worth possibly uh, corrupting some of the things that that and God triggering is, and triggering things that you might not even be aware of? Yeah, and so. I kind of had to put the kibosh on that. You had to separate yourself. And, and you know what? It was worth it. Yeah, like it hurt because like I, I wanted to watch it again. <laughs> but you know what? It was worth it. It would have been a distraction. It, it, it would have been, it, it would have, it would have messed some things up in my soul. Absolutely. I think. And honestly, you don't need to have to waste time repairing something that the Holy Spirit warned you to sure. begin with. It'd be better to avoid it than have to repent and have to yeah. uh, unclutter some things. Yeah. So. And then the reason I brought that up is because, again, like <coughs> watching this show wasn't like this outright sin that, that the Bible addresses, but there are some things that, yeah, you will find yourself needing to separate yourself Absolutely. from, even though it's not some of the very obvious sins. It's all being, really, holiness is dependent on being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is something that might trigger something in my soul, you may not be affected by at all. Sure. Something that might dig something up from my childhood I think, that I don't need to deal with right now, okay? Or I don't need to um, partake of again. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows that. So my path may be narrower than yours in certain areas, but in other areas in your life, it may be the other way around, you know? But it's a matter of being sensitive. Yeah. It's not about rules and regulations. It's not about do's and don'ts. It's not about, I can eat this, I can't eat that. I could wear this, I can't wear that. Sure. It's not, I can walk this many steps on a, uh, on Saturday. It's not about those kind of things. It's about being sensitive to the spirit of God. So, yeah. So listen, let's get into Romans chapter six the next time. Sure. Why don't you, why don't you pray for the people that are watching? Yeah. Um, that God will kind of bring to remembrance the things that we've shared here today. Yeah. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for this conversation on holiness. And Lord, we know that you've already done the most important thing that, that we could ever ask for. You became one of us, Jesus. Yes, you shed your blood yes, on that Lord. cross for us and you rose from the dead and you defeated death for us. You took on the penalty of our sins, God. And now we walk in the newness of life. We yes, walk Lord. in freedom. We Hallelujah. thank you. We're so grateful thank you, for Father. you, Jesus. And uh, Lord, we, we know that we are forgiven, that our sins are forgiven. We know that we are righteous and that we don't need to work up our way to, to get to you now because of what Jesus has done for us, because we put our faith in him. We know these things, God, but we know that you expect your people to walk in holiness. Yes, Lord. As, as we remind ourselves of, of how great your love is and how strong your love is, that strong love of Jesus, as we remind ourselves of the the power of the gospel of Christ. We pray that the Holy Spirit would allow your word, your love to melt our hearts, yes, Lord. to melt the hearts of people watching and listening today. Holy Spirit, uh, I, we believe that you've been speaking some very specific things yes, uh, to people who are watching and listening. Um, and, and we know that you're not forcing anybody to do anything, but you're you're kind of prompting them, encouraging them to come on, come here. Let's let let's pull away from this so that we can yes, step Lord. into that. We I pray that people w would see it that way, that they wouldn't see it as you're trying to take away their fun, God, but that you're trying to bring them into new levels with you, God, new levels of effectiveness and joy and freedom and blessing, God. And uh, we thank you. We we are declaring by faith in Jesus' name that people listening and watching today, this is a threshold moment for them. Yes, that Lord. they're changed. That you're 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 sparking something in them to where where they're they're walking into a new thing. And we thank you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching or listening. And um, yeah, you know, we we believe that. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to some people. Uh, we, uh, you know, I pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to show you some things that, hey, maybe, maybe you should separate yourself from this and, um, and continue on in this pursuit of holiness. Amen. Amen. And so we're, we're going to pick up uh, next time in, in, in along this topic of holiness. And uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. You have a blessed day. Amen. Amen.